trying, we're trying to get into the habit of always checking before we do. Oh, okay, no worries. So uh, basically two things, it's uh, maybe we need to contact kind of more popular guys, uh, maybe from Instagram and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, this, uh, this is also a huge community and there are a lot of people like uh, doing uh, visual materials and influencers for the younger generation, etc. Uh, I'm not sure, like, do we want kind of to take it to, uh, to uh, uh, mass public? But if we, we, if we like, then we probably want uh, to have some kind of a message and, you know, mm -hmm. things like that. And second one, uh, maybe uh, um, we probably should ask other people, but I think that maybe it's good to have, if not a training, then some kind of a session about a little bit about cultural differences. Mm -hmm. Because I personally uh, was few times in the situations when it turned out that I actually was kind of rude to people with, without meaning that at all. Right. Probably. Yep. Maybe other people, they also experienced uh, similar things. And then you're kind of frustrated because for you, it's so normal. Right. You kind of don't understand what did you do wrong. You kind of feel, you know, very, very unpleasant. Mm -hmm. And maybe there are people even in our community who have uh, an experience like in real, a uh, huge global international uh, communications and they come more from a side of uh, organizational culture and emotional intelligence and differences in perceptions and probably uh, we can have like kind of a session on that. I think that's an amazing idea. I think we really should do that soon. I like the idea of also the mass public outreach. I think before we do a real push for that we probably want to now with Liam now having a little bit of time that he can spend helping us with security. I think we want to make sure that we get all of our um, our materials as secure as possible, simply because up until now, the kind of people we've been attracting are the kind of people who are natural collaborators and haven't been trying to mess with our systems. But as soon as we do a big public push, we're going to start getting more of the, the trolls and, and other folks kind of- Agreed. That's absolutely agreed. Actually, uh, do you think that uh, that is something that initially in plan kind of to, to push it more, more, more public? Yeah, I, I, I think that that's something that, that has been kind of a goal. And with the podcast, I think that that's a beginning of a move in, a, in that direction. But that, that absolutely, oh. that's the direction we want to be moving in. Okay. And are there people that you are kind of familiar with that have this background uh, from uh, multicultural uh, organizations? Yeah, I'm trying to, th I, I'm not sure which people sort of in-house that we already have within Corona Y. I think, you know, Ogali and a couple of other people who are used to, and, and I mean yourself as well, who are used to working in different countries, that that's a help. Um, I also think that um, I can probably think, and you probably can as well, of a couple of people who might be outside of Corona Y, who would be able to maybe come in to help give that kind of a presentation. Yeah, I will, I will probably, uh, contact my LinkedIn connections. I never can promise anything like, you know, you contact, but it's, that doesn't uh, mean necessarily that people will agree. Yeah. But I, I will reach out for sure. I'll add uh, a Trello card for that and put both of us on it. Yes, please. Right. Um, and maybe, maybe if you can ask Arthur, most likely, uh, most likely he knows. And actually, I'm very thankful to him for giving me like timely feedbacks because uh, I think Arthur has a, a, a massive uh, experience work co co collaborating like internationally. Yes. And I realize that, uh, for example, uh, some something that are so common and normal in Israel, they're actually uh, not in US. So. Right. No, great. Um, yeah, and if you wanted to, I know you had some other thoughts in terms of just how we can kind of look at the current chaos and, and build some order out of it. Uh, yeah, so regarding uh, 
kind of uh, st uh, structures. Uh, I've noticed that uh, what actually works better for my team, okay, is uh, kind of this uh, 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 double pipeline. One is a kind of core team. People who are there for some time and there are tasks that kind of better match them. And these are people who are organize uh, the most of the uh, push and pipeline. But then you have these emerging teams that come and go away. Then if your critical path for some reason transfers into a more flowy team, uh, you have a, a good chance that things might go a little bit unexpected and some tasks stay uncompleted. Mm -hmm. And then that's three and some, and then there are less of a communication between people because these people, they have less time kind of to invest. Yeah. Then you start getting overlaps and everything. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, it seems, it, it seems almost like in terms of, if I was thinking again, because I've been thinking a lot about the org chart kind of side of things, it's sort of is like that each team potentially, and certainly yours, like a core team, which are those people who have the high, the high dedication and are really working on it through. And then you have the sort of the other team members who may, may jump in, may jump out, are, and there's a little bit less reliability built in to, to the tasks that they might be taking on. Right, so a critical path never, never leaves the core team. Yeah, that makes good sense. And uh, in terms of uh, overlapping, for example, uh, even though we try to figure out it as hard as we only can, that's pretty uh, not easy. Mm -hmm. We have currently three people coordinating pretty small, uh, pretty small flow things. It is uh, uh, me, uh, Yasen, and Anson. And mm -hmm. he's uh, he is uh, actually uh, involvement in uh, uh, structuring things is is beyond amazing. So actually, when you have a lot of kind of um, tasks in parallel, right? You you also need quite a team, yeah, just to manage the structure. So probably structure management team is a kind of a separate team mm -hmm. and, and and seeing that again sort of that's that sub team so for example for risk um there's the core team which are the people who we mentioned yesterday then there's that structure team which is you yasun and anson um and then there's the other people who sort of come in and out and help would that be right yes yeah. yeah okay and yeah, that, really like that and and that like it was so sort of a self-emerged uh, pattern, but it seems work to work much better than other things that we tried. And mm -hmm. why I think it's good because it it you see this kind of grouping, it emerges very very naturally in other teams too. Yeah, it's not something that you need artificially impose on people. Right. But I think, I think the more we're able to observe and name things like that that are working effectively, the, the better that can help other people either duplicate or tweak similar structures for their own teams. Like, for, for example, like for a core team, it uh, turned out to be very, very helpful to really have a team call every day. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that in the beginning. It was actually a huge mistake. Right. And if, if there are any sub teams or small teams that do not uh, keep in touch regularly, like on, the, on a phone, you know, talking real time, talking with, with each other, uh, there is more a risk for overlaps and misunderstandings to occur. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a core team, it's a teams within the team, and it's a, a High, high quality frequent communication. Yeah, no, that's great.
I, I, yeah, I really, I really like the way that you're, that you're describing that. So tomorrow, it sounds like we are going to have, after the daily call, a bit of an organizational call. I'd love to have either you or me present a little bit of that, that uh, snapshot of what's going on within the risk team and how that's working well for you. Um, and to maybe just hear from, I think it would be useful at some point to just have a, a team lead call to find out like what is working well in your team and what are the things that we can all be learning from it. I think that probably the, it is a really good idea to also exchange experiences with other <coughs> with other teams. But um, I see that other teams they are trying to impose more strict structures. They initially have passes and things like that. That is, for mm -hmm. example, something that we don't do. Right. And I don't do that for a purpose. Uh, I think it's uh, to really try to create very strict structure. It's a very time consuming task, mm -hmm. but then you will discover surprise and pivot. Yeah, no, and I, I agree. And I think that that's core to the way that we're trying to do everything with Corona Y is less about take an existing blueprint we have in our minds about how things should be managed and more about staying rigorous in, and alert in observing what's working well and what's happening, mapping that out and then being ready to throw away that map when it becomes out of date. I, I think that the only, uh, that only a map that's more or less working for us at least, yes, it might be very different from other teams, uh, but we don't have really a, a map for anything except two, two uh, closest tasks, closest to execution. Only okay. those two kinds that we have good idea about, we don't think much further because right. it's, it, it didn't help us before. I'm not sure it will work that well. Mm -hmm. And we don't have very strict structure. However, we have some idea of a critical path, you know? Yeah. Not, like on a very high level, because then when you dive in, it all, it all changes. Yeah, yeah. No, These are kind of my observations. Yeah, no, thank you for sharing them. I've taken some notes. I'm going to paste them uh, into our Slack channel. Um, and, then we'll, and then if you're fine with this conversation as well, and I'll flag it as one that maybe is a useful one for some folks to, to listen to. Uh, OK, that, uh, that sounds perfect. And uh, please let me know when you, we will uh, have a, a call uh, with the team leaders, because I, I, th I think that other teams, they do have amazing practices that I probably can also adopt. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's a great idea. And, and, and I think, again, I, I may put something into that orientation manual as well to really hammer home, though, that piece that you're talking about where it isn't about us trying to, um, to superimpose or to force structure on things. It's about us looking at the structure and seeing what's working well and, and experimenting. So, yeah, good stuff. Thanks very much. For that. Appreciate the call, Thanks. and I think there's a lot of great Thank stuff. Thank you so much for everything you are doing for us, Daniel. Likewise, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs> Bye. Bye.